No draws. Uh, Gallagher? Nah, yeah, I was like, that don't sound like no damn Gallagher. <laughs> uh, nah, I was commenting on this. Uh, yeah. IG post. Let's What's go. up, everybody? We got another episode of No Draws. We got a special guest today in the building. Everybody, you gotta introduce yourself. Man, it's your boy Mike Twice, man. The real Mike Twice, man. Grammy Award winning writer. I always wanted to say that. It's the truth, but I always wanted to say it. It's hard, right? It's hard. Um, amazing artist, um, content creator. Uh, I'm kind of stretch, stretching for that a little bit. I don't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Emmy uh, Emmy uh, nominated <laughs> man look that, yo it was crazy the funny thing is how we met I was I we was in we was in the uh who's that West House mm. heard the music playing I was like damn this shit hard I was like bro who is this Facts. Yeah, bro that's that's my song I was like man nigga I went straight to YouTube so I was like bleep let's Facts. go ahead and add this to a playlist right Facts. and then now we here <laughs> now we here. <laughs> This is life is crazy. Cheers to that. Hey, As I drink from this uh, slutty vegan cup. Hopefully, hey. I'll be a sponsor. Hello. Hey. I don't taste the bourbon or whatever the hell I'm drinking. Hey, you know the history behind the whole. Yo, what is that? So, like back in the day, like in the old timey days, when kings and oh. castles and shit. Okay. Like you know, they was always afraid that somebody was gonna like uh, like poison the king. So like after like a battle, they was like in the mead hall and shit. Mm-hmm. They had them cups and they would slam them together. So mm-hmm. that way, like if you poison my beer, everybody beer gets sloshed together and shit. Now so, we all finna die. Yeah, now we all gonna die. Oh damn, I don't wanna do it. No and more. if you in here, you better be drinking. Type, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, damn. <laughs> Like, I got poisoned a little bit. Not a lot. Right, right, Somebody right. Somebody got a lot of the poisoning. Somebody got more poison than everybody else. Nico's Kitchen Shop. Are you ready to unlock the secrets of sea moss? Are you ready to stop disappointing somebody's daughter? It's an arrange of options. You can get sea moss gummy, sea moss gel, sea moss other stuff that's on this piece of paper that's in front of me. Hold up. Let me see. When you check out, you put in a promo code for the show. No draws. N-O-D-R-A-W-S. No draw. Look at it. This is sea moss. Super soft. It's a muscle on there. That's somebody meat right there with a muscle on it. You d- girl, muscle in the wife beater. Get you some sea moss from Nico's Kitchen Shop. It's gonna have you up and through there and pff, in a hose heart chakra. And now you can drive her car. Yo, Ferg, what up? They killed. King we just all got the shits now. Ain't nobody yeah. gonna die. Yeah, now, now back then you would die, die real. Nah, you die from nah, for sure. you die from the most small thing. Like you had a regular cold and he died. The niggas call that shit the fever. Yeah, it's like you get a fever now, nigga. You just wait a couple hours. Yeah, now nah, like we dying from other stuff. We ain't even dying from AIDS no more. Mm-mm. You got a vitamin now. Niggas is living, nigga. Have you seen them commercials? The prep pill. Yeah, it'd be two dudes kissing mm-hmm. each other. Nah, I'm not fuck that part. I'm talking <laughs> about the part where. They just be living their best life, right? Like, oh, on, on the pill? Yeah, yeah. they just be riding horseback and parasailing, and it's like, ah, damn. You got to take our prep pill. If you want to live good life. <laughs> Get the prep life. Get the prep life. And it'd be two dudes playing fucking right, right. tiddlywinks or whatever. Tiddlywinks. Whatever <laughs> tiddlywinks is. <laughs> they be in the band, they, especially in Atlanta. They show a nigga in the band real quick, real, real fast. They be targeting Morehouse, boy. Man, they be that like, shit is all, crazy. And I'm like, damn, that, that went straight to HBCU. <laughs> Look at it. I'm telling you, bro. I seen the commercial. It be dudes with symbols. Right, you stupid. Have you been infected? Yeah, right, right. Have you or a loved one come in contact with the HIV virus or another one? Then please contact none of us. Be two dudes looking into the right, camera. Right, 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 right. Take your life back yeah. with Zimalak. <laughs> <laughs> then he'd be like, it does not Him permit. Be gone. <laughs> it does not permit tra- sexually transmitted diseases. Right. I'm like, wait, but it's it's like side effects may include uh, d- drowsiness, sleepiness, achy ribs, death. Like they be throwing Whoa, death as the side effects now. Oh, that's a that's a that's a possibility. <laughs> that's if a I real take it, no, bro. Liver that's failure. A, that's like, a what? real side effect from the commercials, though. And in my mind, I think like, boy, now you can rob your boyfriend in peace. You ain't got to worry about transmitting him. None of the sicknesses. Living your best life. That man said, now nah, you can <laughs> rob your boyfriend. You can. Hey, man, you know, they did this study, man. Um, it's crazy. They did this study on HIV, bro. They was like, uh, <laughs> they said that the doctors ain't want people to know this, but they would do like the married couples, like, let's say, you know what I'm saying? You, your, uh, your neighbor, uh, John Bob and uh, Jill Jane, you know what gotcha. I'm saying? John Bob fucked around and got AIDS. And okay. him and Jill Jane still got damn rah-rah and he's still shooting the club and shit. She ain't never get AIDS. Like, and they, they found that like to be most of the time in the study, they said it was uh, 
it was more of a, you know what I'm saying? I'm clearly not the, not the scientist and shit, gotcha. but it was like, it was a toxicology mm-hmm. thing. Like it wasn't a, the way that virus, like we don't understand what viruses viruses really are, so it's like a toxicology thing, more like your body, your internal shit is like, hey, let's cook some shit up or let's accept some shit in to help us tighten up. I don't know. Don't go home and quote me and don't <laughs> don't go on 19 Keys, this goddamn podcast, hey, tell the hey, niggas. <laughs> you understand me? You understand? See, brother, see, this is what's wrong with our community is that, mm-hmm. see, we don't even understand what a virus is, brother. We don't. We look. We take the mitochondria and it builds up in your system, and it fights the white T cells. And when there's a, a triumphant amount of white T cells, you break everything down. And see, I'm gonna tell you the problem with the white T cells. They're too busy leaning with it and rocking with it. So the problem is with our community. That even down to the cellular level, brother, mm-hmm. we shucking and jiving. Shucking and jiving. And that's why we dying from these crazy diseases. Because our white T cells are shucking, jiving, and. Polo, p- p- pool oh, Patterson. yes. <laughs> that boy, that was the favorite part of when you do that. You be like, oh, I'm, oh, oh these hoes on me. Now and you now. feel like you're that nigga. Boy, you'd be doing that in church. I remember that. I hey, but I ain't gonna church. lie, though. Like, if you landed it, you still was that nigga, though. Like, yep. a female, you would get some female interaction out no, of that guy. way he tossed it up, bitch. Snap, caught that hoe. Caught oh! that hoe. <laughs> She finna have my meat in her mouth tonight. You stupid, bro. My, I can never do the dance. my tall time. t-shirt truck. Like, right, right, right. <laughs> trying to hit it. Goddamn 4X, 5X. Why was we doing that, Why man? was we doing that? Oh, man. But you know what, though, bro? We did slouch socks. We, but, but, bro, like, for real, It's coming for back real, around, too. It actually. is, bro. All that shit is coming back around, bro. But the ATL and shit, like, I be telling you, this shit is real. Like, we was always just on some weirdo shit. Like, we were, bro, my homegirl, shout out to Miss Babes up in uh, Newark. I was telling my girl this the other day. I was like, man, my homegirl talking about she came down here and was like, y'all niggas dress like y'all on boats. And I was like, wait, wait, what? She's like, nigga, y'all wear boat wear, nigga. I was like, what you mean? She was like, nigga, what y'all got? I'm like, okay, polo skippers, khaki shorts, yep. polo shirts. Mm-hmm. Like, man, nigga, tough. you was fresh if you came to school with some trunks. Not a trunk, like, nigga, swimming trunks. And wasn't nobody near no beach. <laughs> no, nobody. I, ain't, nigga, I ain't never seen no beach, nigga. But we every day, nigga, we look like we are the nigga. I, we got on the whitest socks, the whitest Man. tennis shoe we can find, mm. and we got on fucking trunks and polo shirts and boat shoes. And you know what killed me <laughs> when I did the see through Air Force Ones? That's how you know who was rich or not. Who had it? Them Yo, socks, socks them boys. Socks. Get some see through Air Force Ones or Bapes. You be looking at them like, yo, what, what you, what you doing, bro? You knew people was gonna see your feet. That's crazy as hell. That's scary. We like, bro, you gotta get new socks every time you wear them. But back then, it wasn't for a nigga, like a nigga. Ooh. I don't mean the pretty boy like that was spoiled. Like a nigga, special socks was not even in the option. That was like not even a thing at all. Now that I'm an adult and I control my own life, I got all kind of different crazy special socks. Crazy socks, just socks for no reason. Ugly socks, ugly socks, soft socks. Warm socks. Slouchy socks. Slouching socks. Like nylon socks for church. Man, listen. The ones that smell like deacon. Dry fit socks. Yeah. You said it smell I don't like, like deacon. They smell like you know you ever hear smell of de- somebody that came from church taking their shoes off. It smell like prayer in here. You stupid. <laughs> it smell like, it smell like, it smell like prayer in here. It do. Like, yeah, you don't need to be around my mom on them type of things. Smell like I've been sneaking around the church trying to holler at these other moms. Yeah. <laughs> like, listen here, you need back. some prayer, ma'am. You right, right. You need some hands laid on you. Hey, that don't tell you how old men flirt. Like, without being, like, overt with it, what they say saying? one phrase. All right, now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's got that's a lot. Friend. They got a lot behind it, all right, now. Hey, you don't know how to take it, but hey. Yeah. But that, it's not, I was up to her. She'd be like, ah, uh, what mm, did that mean? Yeah. Young uh, you need to get take your it. husband. Talking about all right, now. What you mean? I just said all right, now. Mm-hmm. She keep talking crazy to me. I, I tell you crazy. Mm-hmm. Back in the day, they used to call me Loose Leg Larry. Okay, man. Loose Leg Larry. Sweet Lady beat. Love, Loose Leg Larry. That's why we used to say the L. Cool J stole it from me because, see, you know, his auntie used to come down this way. Mm-hmm. See, y'all don't know. Everybody up north, they family come from down here. Exactly. Teach us something. Loose Leg Larry and Sweet Dick Willie is what they used to call me daddy. <laughs> call me Richard for short. Mm-hmm. Sweet Dick, SD for short. SD, all the fellas call me SD. <laughs> yeah, the ladies come <laughs> like, and call me the, Sweet the, Dick. Yeah, yeah, the Sweet Dick. <laughs> Yeah, I would damn if I call a nigga Sweet right. Dick Willie. Sweet Dick! No, whoa! <laughs> like, hey, wait a minute! <laughs> Time out. Whoa! Why are we calling him that? Why are you screaming out Sweet Dick? 
across the street. Hey, sweet dick, you left your phone. Sweet dick, my boy. Hey. <laughs> What if you and the DJ walking in the booth and then coming shooting like bam, 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 bam. Oh shit, we got my boy Sweet Dick Sweet with me walking bam, through. Bam, bam. Sweet Dick, I see you. <laughs> Nigga DJ on that boat. Tell the motherfucker about tender. <laughs> Sweet Dick Willie just walked in this bitch. Ladies, keep your purse by your side, Sweet Dick Willie. Oh, I know that nigga dressed <laughs> awful, man. I know he dressed bad. Sweet Dick Willie. He got to walk on him too, eh? Hey? Yeah. He all shoulders. Mm-hmm. That nigga sassy. He do stuff like this when he like wants something. He like he do his hands Why like his this. hands like that. His hands be like, man, is the uh, is the uh, the fact that oh, IG used to be this old dude come in dancing. He always, oh man, IG niggas be making me laugh that dance. I feel bad if you go viral doing that though, because you gotta keep doing that forever. Now you, you now you sweet dick Willie hands. Man, they uh, <laughs> the gorilla or the dude that the big. Uh, the big thick nigga that be doing. Hey this. man, he getting a lot of backlash. Man, it's a lot, bro. He getting a lot of backlash. I be looking at the like, comments. It just be like, bro, you like six foot, two hundred and fifty eight pounds. Nah, he got to be about. He, he got to be three. three you think he three? Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. That's yeah. a big dude, bro. He ain't no little fella. And he be having loafers and no socks. But he seemed like he wouldn't bust a grape. No, nah, he seemed like he'd be like, well, I would love some grape papaya. Right, actually, could you bust the grapes for me and then Please. I'll enjoy it. I'm allergic to grape skin, so just give yeah, me the grape. Yeah, could you get the tannins? <laughs> I don't even know what that is. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> That's wine shit. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was like, well, the tannins. The skins. <laughs> the tannins. That shit would be crazy, but like, how, just to go back into to you since you were the guest today, how, when did you start rapping, bro? Man, I started rapping when I was four years old, man. Damn. Or you knew you was gonna do this? That no, I ain't know I was gonna do this. You just was rapping. I loved it. That you, was my shit. When did you know that? Yeah, what was your first raps? I know you know. Man, the first rap. I know album. you know it. Hey, look at oh, he asked like, me this. I gotta rap it. Where they go? Nah, so I tell you the story, right? So I'm like four years old. My sister in school. I don't even know if I made it elementary school yet. I think you I was still in preschool. You got a tip towards your face, pause. God damn, I sorry, I don't want to paint. I don't know if I want to do it now. Nah, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I think I'm going to go ahead and get the fuck out of here, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I heard the car. Sweet Dick Willie, come back. Right, right. Let me holler at my butt, Sweet Dick, see if I can still catch a ride. Pause. Nah, but. Uh, sweet Dick is hilarious. Nah, so my sister was in school and whatever. She had to come up with a rap with her friends and shit for like a project. They came home doing that shit. And I was like, of course, on some little bro shit. Like, teach me. Teach me. I, I want to know the rap. This. I can do it. Yeah. So. I don't remember the whole thing, but okay. I do remember, like, the beginning of it. All right. So, if we can get the beginning, I'm here for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This might kind of uh, give away the, the time that this rap was written this, when you hear it. hilarious. <laughs> I was walking down the street the other day, a big hickory stick up and followed my way. I picked it up. I twirled it around. I headed to a fence to make my favorite sound. I banged it. I pinged it. I banged it again. And then I don't remember the rest oh, of it. Oh, man. That I was freestyled. Hard, four, at four? I ain't write that shit. Oh, okay. I was like, wait, hold so, on. So, so that's how I started. So then like, okay, boom. I was like, oh, shit. This is like, what is this? Like, I can put, I can make words rhyme. Yeah. And it makes sense. Like, I can tell a story type that's shit. That's crazy. So I'm not going to ask if everyone else, guys on the couch, if you guys can put your phone on silent. Yeah, please do. That yeah. that would be me. That would be him. I thought it was. Uh, but nah. So after that, man, what I started doing is like when I was little, I would like hear songs on the radio, and I would like replace the words. Okay. Um, and that's how I started rapping. Like, and then eventually I just started like branching out on my own, uh, expressing myself. You know what I'm saying? Poetry and shit. Like I love poetry. You, you was in poetry, man. I think I I won poet of the year when I was in elementary school. That's crazy. National poet of the year, bro. I mean, you meant to do that when you making it early. My brothers and my sisters. Right. You, peace, you been peace, in them. Peace, 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 been... peace. <laughs> and them, them poetry slams be crazy because it get kind of sad when them girls get up there. I have been raped. Right. Oh, whoa. Oh, wait a minute. This is where we start. Coming from a broken home. Homes are broken. Homes are broken open. But he just wants some dome. What is a bitch to do? Let's be like, oh, she said bitch. It's, it's provocative. Yeah. It's a provocative thing. Yeah. So you wouldn't understand because you got a penis. Yeah. It's like, damn. It's like you giving us feminist poetry. Right, I came to enjoy the poetry too. My brothers and my sisters, yeah. you can only prevent <laughs> forest fires. Forest fires. Amen. Peace, 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 peace. Shalom. Shalom. <laughs> I don't know. What the fuck? Hey, fuck it. Jew- hey, t- shout out to my Jewish poet buddies yeah. out there. 
You think Jewish people have Oh, the Dead Poets Society and shit. You think they You ever seen that movie? No. The Dead Poets Society? No. Nah. Oh, that's actually a good ass movie. Well, it's about Dead Robin Poets. Williams. Yeah. No, no, yes. So it's like It seems like it's depressing. It's like they create like a secret society, not that's that's kind okay. of overshooting it. This is a secret club, like a book club and shit, and they would just read like old like poets and shit. Like oh, so cool. the Dead Poets Society. Like you had to kinda you had to, hey man. If you don't know what Ralph Waldo Emerson is talking like, that kind of, oh, you, you know, know what I'm saying? I don't need to be here. Then. Yeah, exactly. Type shit. Like you're uh, a lame, bro. You don't know Langston Hughes. You know how to. You know how like the nerds find a way to be cool. Yeah. Like those are my favorite kind of nerds. Like now I'm not just gonna stand in lameness in your eyes. I'm gonna be cool in my eyes. Yeah. Because they could just be overshadowed by your coolness as a jock. Yeah. But that instead, they choose they do they do their own shit, and you're lame in their world. Yeah. Like you don't know anime. Right. One piece, you're a bro? fucking. Dweeb, this guy. noob, <laughs> fucking noob, bro. <laughs> Get him away from here. Look at his outfit. <laughs> what they be saying in the uh, chat on uh, on the game? Nigger, 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 nigger. Oh, bro, Call <laughs> of Duty will get you. Yeah. You be hearing a ten year old call you the n word. Like, what is? Whoa, <laughs> this is what we're doing. Can't do nothing about it. Go to the live and come back. It's gonna be I'm another like, one. Where do you live? Your mom is about to get entered in next week. Oh no. They be like, shut up. <laughs> but bro, yeah, so. That's how I just got my start, bro. Uh, just like here, like me and my sister used to make like you know record shit off the radio and shit back in the day, and then I just like write my own lyrics. Too. That's crazy, bro. Yeah. Man, shout out to that man and knowing that four, bro. I did not know shit at four. I, I didn't even know, know. I was. I don't even remember what I was doing at four. I probably was in these streets just running around in my drawers. You wore drawers. I did wear draws at okay. that time, or they were still like I still was. In fact, he looked back at the sign. I didn't yeah. look at it too to see if he did no something draws. special. No I'm draws. trying to think when I stopped wearing. I don't remember. I I was one of them kids that was walking early and shit. You leave it up to your mom. She tell you you was a prodigy child type shit. Yeah, yeah. all of us. Like, you was walking at black, ten months. Right. The whole it's like then you look it up and you're supposed to start walking at yeah, nine months. Yeah, like, come on. It's man. like oh, that ain't special. I'm regular for yeah, yeah, you yeah, stop. yeah, yeah, yeah. You hit your head. Your head held up. Mm-hmm. When you was four months, it's like that was I was supposed to do yeah. that. I got a strong neck. I got a strong neck. I mean, my neck is regular technically because yeah. all the kids was doing the you same. You was thing. reading when you was in fourth grade in a fifth grade level. At a fifth grade level, that's one year. <laughs> I think yeah, my mom. I ain't gonna lie, I was reading in college level and shit, but. Yeah, you realize, like, being black, you realize you way ahead of everybody because you do so much shit real quick as a kid. You be like, nah, I don't like that, I don't like that, and you naturally gifted at certain things. Right. But, it like, to you, it's just something you do, but to other people, it's like, what, you do this? And you be sitting there like, yeah. It's regular. You don't, And you don't think. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, 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 bro. Yeah, I do this. And when you be playing me some of them songs, I'm like, bro. The fact that you can remember the cadence and know the words, I couldn't do that, bro. Yeah, couldn't you, do none of that. You was in the whip with me. I was, I was like, running through, yo, running through them tracks real quick, like, man. Like, that's crazy. What, no, first of all, hey, anybody that's rapping and doing any showcases and you got your vocals on behind them, kill yourself. Kill yourself. You sound ridiculous. Or at least just practice. Yeah, like you ain't even, you don't even take it serious. Yeah, don't rap over yourself, man. Because I was like, you was playing the music and I was like, Oh, this nigga know the words and the cadences and when the chorus come in and when he got to sing, it's crazy. I would have forgot it. You know what, though, man? Like, there is, like, some, like, leeway, though. Like, if it's a venue that you know got, like, fucked up sound, uh, it's like if it's, if that shit is just bad. Like, if I if I had a mic and the, and the beat was playing, you couldn't hear me no way. It's like, play the song. Ah, uh, you know didn't saying? know that you had to do that. Yeah, some places be like that. But I still, I like, I just try to make the people feel bad. Uh, like, you <laughs> improve your shit, bro. The Improve audio shit. engineers trash, bro. Yeah, nah. Just if a place got bad acoustics or, or a bad sound system, it's just like I don't rap over my words. I'm a real artist. <laughs> <laughs> this is art one on one type shit. That's how. So, what's the worst place that you've ever like performed? Ever? Like you be like, this is why am I here right now? I, we've we've done a lot of you do a lot of shows like that, but it's one that you know that stick out. You be like, why the hell? Am I here right now? All right, so this is, I got one that just popped out. And I ain't even actually, I ended up not even actually performing. Oh, God. So, I came back from L.A. Mm-hmm. Now, mind you, I'm in L.A. at this time. This is the, this is the the time. I'm mm-hmm. in L.A. I'm working on the yay shit, working on actually Jesus is King shit, um, working with another artist or whatever. And um, 
I come back to Atlanta. I'm like, you know, I'm back and forth like every two weeks. Mm-hmm. So um, somebody from the squad hit me up. I'm not going to say their name. Um, matter of fact, it was funny. Westwood was there that night. And I had to have this conversation with him. I asked, I asked him just to make sure I wasn't tripping. So I get there, and the dude, whoever brought the original sound system, is leaving. The show is not even over. So he, so he like I'm taking my system? he like I'm taking my ball back type shit. And uh, <laughs> you can somebody, do that. Yeah, I guess <laughs> that's so. What, that's what you do. Like, I'm not about to be here no more. I'm taking all this equipment. And the nigga came out with like the little sound, like the little karaoke little. Okay. Like you at the crib with your parents and you on the holidays, like yeah. I, everyone, man. You know, you trying to do your, your house karaoke Where shit. Where the hell did you pull that song from? <laughs> hey, man, I don't know. <laughs> that shit just, that's a, that's the type of song that you'll do karaoke, yeah, though. You and your mama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sing this, come, come on. Yeah, right. Your mama drinking a daiquiri. Right. Ooh. Ooh. So, I turned to Westwood, I pulled him aside, and I was like, bro. <laughs> I was like, dog, I ain't being... Like, I'm not being arrogant if I don't want to do this right. Mm-hmm. I was like, am I supposed to still do this? Like, is this still part of, like, is this a part of, like, my growth as a person? Like, okay, I see what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? It like, test you. Yeah, like, do am I supposed to, like, because I'll do it. Mm-hmm. And that's why I'm like, that's why I ask, am I supposed to not be doing this? Okay. Because I'll do it. That's the type of nigga I am. Yeah. That's the type of nigga I am. Yeah. If, bro, I'll tell you a funny story. Like, a long time ago, I was in high school, so my uh, shout out to Marvin Chan's partner. He used to play all, like, the keys for the Dungeon Family and shit. Like, so, like, you hear him on, like, uh, I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. Like, he playing keyboard and all that shit. So he was what? my producer at the time. And um, I met him through my homegirl in high school named Selena Nixon. So Selena had brought me through his studio one day, whatever. He ended up being my producer. That was her producer. So mm-hmm. we had a song together, and we had a show at Stank On You back before it was open to the public to do, like, before they was doing all these, like, showcases and all that. This, this, is, this is wild back. <clears throat> I got up on stage, right? So we played it like, you know what I'm saying? Nobody knew I was on the song. I didn't start out on stage. I'm just, I'm the rap that's like answering to the chick part and shit. Oh, okay. So I'm in the crowd, but I got a mic. Man, so it's time for me to rap. When I hop up and everybody like the fuck, I cut the mic on and it don't do nothing. Oh, that's the worst. So I'm just like rapping my heart out. Like, so like I'm saying that to say like these are situations I've been in before that I, I just be like, I'm gonna do it anyway. Like I you love, got to. I love music. So yeah. it's like, I was gonna perform with the little karaoke thing. I was gonna do that, bro. Cause it's in your spirit to do it's it. It's in my spirit to it's do in it. In your spirit to do it. When it's in your spirit, you do it anyway. But I ain't do it though. I ain't do it. I ain't do it. Cause I came to the conclusion. I was like, nah, this is janky as fuck. I gotta make some boundaries. Yeah. I gotta niggas can't think I'm gonna come through just. And and I ain't just finna do anything. Uh, yeah, you, you ain't finna beat on the table. I'm, I ain't rapping to that. Hell no, nah. I'm hit that point now. I like I just got to that point. Like <laughs> man, man, fuck all this shit. I'm not. No, nah, I'm good. You gotta have some standards, bro. Because like <clears throat> you can't. It's not fair to you that if you're doing the same thing as people who are just starting out, mm-hmm. and you've been and you have gotten to a certain place with your crowd, mm-hmm. like. And not to say I'm better than nobody or above nobody, but it's just kind of like, man, when I used to serve tables, man, they told me, like, when you're ready, you give yourself a raise. And I was like, what kind of lame-ass shit is that? And it was like, okay, I started getting good at serving. I started getting my time together. I started getting my spirit. Hey, guys, my name is Michael. I'll be taking care of you. Yeah. Anybody's first time here? Eric, absolutely. Wow. Um, so I'm going to let you look over the menu. I'm going to go grab you guys some water, maybe some lemon, lime. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I'll be back in just a moment. Give you some time to look over the menu, guys. This nigga, got All right. me, he ain't serving me shit. Yeah. But you see what I'm saying? Like when I got He's to that got level, it. I was making way more money than. Uh, hey y'all, uh, I'm Mike. Y'all want some breadsticks? I the special today. Clam chowder. Clam. Actually, it's clam corn chowder. <laughs> I didn't even know that. <laughs> clam corn chowder is seventeen dollars. Damn. Uh, y'all want y'all drinking? What y'all doing? What would you guys like? You know what I'm saying? Damn. What would you guys like? Nah, but. It just, that progression from yeah. there to there, like, and then you start getting better shifts and shit like that. So it's mm-hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? Like a Monday morning shift would be like to a person that's seasoned in the, in the service industry. That's below a morning, mo- a morning, a Monday morning shift is going to be two things to a seasoned person. An insult or a, uh, or a reason to prove to them that they steal the shit. So it's like, oh, you gave me a Monday morning? 
oh, nigga, I'm finna go in this bitch and rack up on Monday morning. I know only 10 people come in here. I'm gonna get all But I'm gonna get goddamn $30 from each one of the motherfuckers. Yeah. Watch this. Watch me cook, ho. Ho. But it, it's just one of the ones like, yeah, you, you gotta like, yeah, I agree 100% that you gotta set standards. Yeah. With your art, you gotta set standards with a lot of shit. Thanks. You, you know, nobody teach you that either. You gotta just happen to come to that space. They don't tell you that. For men, I know for men for the most part. Because we'll, we'll just like, as long as ain't nobody dying and nobody hurting, we don't be caring. But then it comes to a point like, all right, now nah, I'm not finna do this. Like, I, I've come to the point like, if I go out, I'm not going to know. I'm not, I can't. Nope. I can't go to regular population. It sounds like bougie shit to say. Nah. But it's just. Bro. I've done so much to get to where I'm at. And I'm like, nigga, I'm not finna go pay $700. That's for y'all people that go and do That's nine to fives masses. and want to just, like, show out. Like, nah, bro, I can't do and it. And unfortunately, it's the real, man, I can't, like, bro, I swear to God, I was just texting my partner Zeus. Um, it's actually, I met him through Westwood. Um, me and Zeus live in the same neighborhood. We live, like, 25 seconds away. <laughs> it's bougie-ass neighborhood on the south side right now. So... um. Man, Zeus was just texting him because he uh, he texted me. <laughs> he, was, he was making fun of one of my story pictures and shit, right? You know how your phone be like, memories from three years ago. Oh, and so it was terrible. Yeah, I was in the park by myself and shit. I got the shade. Oh, I saw yeah, that. He, he saw was it. like loving myself. You no, know, I said back when I was still dating myself. Cause, I saw that the other yeah, day. Because it was the truth, though. I was at the park. I was at Sweetwater, right? And so he hit me with the LMAO oh, 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 shit. And I was like, damn, it's crazy. I was just thinking about you because the last time I saw him, I saw him like, a week and a half, maybe um, a week before I went to Houston, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, he hit me up. He was like, bro, you at the store? I need you to grab me a, a leaf. Ooh. So I, I pulled up on him. He was like, nigga, I'm finna go to Japan. And I was like, what? So when he I, when he hit me hit me with the jokes and shit, I was like, nigga, I was just thinking about your ass. How was Japan and shit? And he was like, man, this shit got me kind of, I'm, feel, I'm feeling great, but it kind of got me thinking like, man, I need to get back to sticking to people that's like, that's like, can't go around like the normal population all the time, like you have to be around the people that's like magnetized mentally to what you are. Like if you're it's creative. It's weird, man. It's not even weird, bro. It just, it just is what it is. Game, man, listen, let me tell you something, bro. My girl, she, she uh, shout out to Destin Delights. Um, Plug. Anyway, he so she, uh, she, uh, she's a food vendor, man. Um, and she does a pescatarian menu. <laughs> Catfish nuggets. We call them rich nigger nuggets. Not nigger with the hard ER, but this, you know, I got an accent, so the A sounds. You said rich nigga nuggets. Yeah, the rich nigga. Shout out to the rich nigga nuggets. No, but. That's hilarious. Um, bro, but she get, uh, she do this, um, she end up vending at this, like, um, cosplay thing. Oh, okay. Like anime type shit? Yeah, well, yeah, they do all of it, right? Okay. So, like, the, the, the cosplay. Oh, you good. Right the now. cosplay people, guess what they do? They fuck with cosplay people. Mm hmm. And these people are not normal people, bro. At all. These people are spending hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars so to make money. sure that they look like Batman for real or like Thousands. Death Note or like like these people really be spending like I don't even know what Death Note man, is. Man, listen. I'm just saying these aren't normal people. So they like they go to work and they probably be bland at work. They probably these probably be like the pretty chicks you see at work that don't talk to no niggas. And you be like, damn, what's her? she got an attitude. It's like, no, she don't got an attitude. She just wants some lame at... I'm sorry, that's not... I'm not calling them lame. They're she wants lame. some anime... Uh, They're not lame, bro. I, I take dude, that Dude, that's back. why eating Doritos every day... But that's what we would be saying lame. if you was at work and you worked in the warehouse. And be like, she want a lame-ass nigga want to dress like Batman. He don't work there. And he, if he do, y'all call him lame. Yeah. But that's her people. Mm-hmm. So she want to be around those people. You know what I'm saying? So for us, like... We like there's no other way to push this type of art out at this level if we're around. Yeah, yeah, we can get like the life lessons from like normal life, which we do. We get that shit all day. Yeah, there's no way to get away from general population. No way. I mean, impossible. Yeah, impossible. I don't want to completely ever get away from general population. Because then you'll, you'll be this. You'll be, be like, disconnected. From yeah, real. I and I I hear it in the music. I hear it in like people. Like at a certain point, you could tell when an artist got away. From the regular general population, because it that suffers, the art suffers. To me, people say it's a transition. I'm like, but but like, isn't it our job to be the voice of the people and the voice of this? And why would you separate yourself from that? Well, it's two things. First, you're the voice of the people, and then you graduate to giving the people something to look to. Okay, now you the person like. Now you're the one that inspires people. Mm. Like, and I hate to bring this name up, but like Kanye, right? 
Um, a lot of times, first off, let me tell you some sh- crazy shit, bro. When you be, when you get around, yeah. Oh yeah, you gotta tell him. Uh, yeah, he run a Grammy if he didn't hear. I all did this win a Grammy. So listen, when you when you get around, yay, and this is a perfect example of this. You hear these ideas that he has that end up on like as as a sound bite. Like you'll be at the studio and it'll be like a group discussion, and this idea that he's talking about now on this show was talked about two, four, five, six years ago type shit, right? Mm-hmm. But it's like. Sometimes by the time, like, it's almost like boxing, like, you know, people are like verb, like verbal sparring, right? Sometimes the punch you practice was like this, but he might have like dodge and like threw it like this. So it's like, oh, what kind of punch was that? Mm. So it's like, you hear the idea and it's like, oh no. Oh, I see how it sounds now. Oh, this shit sounds crazy. Like, I'll give you an example. He was like, I'm going to change my name. He said this. Listen, he said this. <laughs> and I don't even know if he said this in the interview or not, but I'm going to say this. He was like, man, I should change my name to Christian, black, black Christian billionaire Kanye West. Right? And if you just, because of the narrative that's pushed on him, if you just hear him say that with no background explanation, it sounds crazy. Just sound like niggas want to change his name. Like, it sounds like he was some ego shit. But he said, no, I just want little black boys to know they can be Christian and billionaire. Oh, well. And it's like, oh. That's real, that's real noble. That's different yeah. than how, like, by the time you hear it on, like, you know what I'm saying? TMZ, TMZ or whatever, right. Shade Room. Now they make them seem like an asshole. Yeah, I, well, because I, I watched the, them interviews, and I'd be like, well... Y'all just taking this out of context because we all know he means well. So y'all just being mad at little Man, bitty pieces. So many things that he didn't say that I heard. And I'm like, ah, oh, that's not how you, oh, I know that. Yeah. Oh, I heard that conversation. That's right. not how you meant it. But I say all that to say that, like, you, sometimes you need those people running out in front of you. Like, I mean, I'm sure you can, you didn't been through this before. Like, an a, a ex you done dated a long time ago or somebody that you're not friends with a long time ago said some shit to you. And when you first heard it, you was like, oh, nigga, fuck you. Yep. And then, like, Definitely. 10 years later, you're like, that motherfucker was right. Yeah, my uncle wasn't in it. My uncle told me, like, if you don't make it, it's your fault. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? That hurt my I'm soul. Talking, nigga, I called my mama. I didn't tell you what this nigga told me. 30 years old. And then I was like, you right. He was 10 so years right. later, you getting that shit tatted. Yeah. If you don't make it, it's your fault. Your fault, nigga. <laughs> bitch ass. Let me tell you some bitch ass, nigga. I wake up every morning at 235 yeah. and do 15 squats. I eat 15 eggs that ain't cooked and I don't jack off no more. I See my retention. It. I yeah. stopped it. And I read a whole book before noon. And if you don't, you will never be rich, brother. You will never, my brother. Get your life and your chakras aligned. <laughs> your chakras. Uh, yeah. Stop working from your root chakra. That's the sex chakra. That's why your aura red. Mm-hmm. Because you're angry. Because you're angry with... all the goddamn time. All you want to do is fuss and fight. And you feel with lemon fu- pepper wings. What? I don't know. I don't know if that's going to make your chakra red. Doing a lot of perks probably do. Man, I definitely, got, I definitely got some dreads that's not in my braids. That's fine. That happens. Normally, I, normally I got a lot of dripped out, but you know. Yeah, he be having a lot of shaman outfits and stones on him. I do. I do. Not I today. rocks like that. I rocks like that uh, with the rocks. So you said you wrote. How did you get that call? Like when you walked me through the process when you got the call, you were like, they want you to work on the, uh, which album was it? Jesus King? The mm. blue one? Well, that actually, sonically. before yeah. it was Jesus is King, it was Yandi. I do remember that. It was Yandi. So, and, and dog. So, all right. So, um, one of the guys I, that I worked with Ye. I cried. If you're like, well, who and what? But look, so one of the dudes that worked with Ye, man, I was, uh, I was working. I was at the restaurant, man. This is 2017, 2017, 16, 17. It was just, this was before today. Okay. <laughs> before, today. <laughs> Before today, uh, I saw him, and then uh, actually they saw me and linked up. Um, I started doing a lot of work with them. Um, and we were doing, you know, we were doing our thing, doing work for a lot of other people. Like I just started. That's when I started finally like learning the song right. Well, not learning the song song right, but kind of solidifying myself in it because it was like, oh. My shit is good. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, the other shit that I'm writing for other people type shit. Oh, my shit is good. Oh, 
I can hear a female saying my shit back to me, and it's just like, oh. I did that shit. So long story short, this particular person um, was plugged in with yeah, whatever, and um, started working on Yandy. Man, I started getting tracks to my phone, like you know what I'm saying, like. That's wild, bro. In my mind, I'm like, yo, it's getting sent to my phone. I ain't gonna lie, bro. It was it was wild, and I'm gonna be candid and transparent as fuck. I wasn't really a huge Kanye fan. Like, I knew he was talented. And I'm going to tell you this shit, and it's going to sound crazy because that's how the it shit just sound. sound crazy, yeah. So, in high school and shit, I started producing on, on Fruity Loops, right? And um, if anybody that has Fruity Loops know that the innate version of this program is for, like, techno music. And, and like, you know what I'm saying? EDM, like, doof, doof, like, how, yeah, like because they gave you so many loops. The, most of the loops are, are geared towards, like, so I was making beats like that back in the day, and then Ye started doing that shit, and he was oh he was using tracks like that, and I was just like, like I saw a lot of parallels between me and him, even though I wasn't really tuned into him. Got you. You know what I'm saying? I was an Outkast fan, been a diehard Outkast fan since I was a little boy. You know what I'm saying? Well, since I was like ten, that's when I knew. You and I heard elevators. Dating. I'm dating myself. I heard I heard the elevators come on one day, and I was like, I knew the whole song. And then he's like, yep, this it for I'm me. I'm like, I only heard this shit one time, but I know this whole song. That's crazy. I it's, could never do that. Nah, but so, like, I saw a lot of, like, similarities uh, musically. And not to say, like, oh, man, well, I, mean, I, make, I make the same music as, like, I'm not saying that, but I just wasn't a huge fan. Like, I knew he was talented, you know what I'm saying? Like, I respected what he did. And so, like, when I found out that that was like, okay, this is what I'm about to do, like, I started going through the catalog. And I was just like, oh, I know more of his music than I thought. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Um, and to the point where I started becoming a fan of, like, I'm I'm not the type, if I'm not a fan of yours, I'm not going to go check out every album you drop. Yeah, that's that's facts. You know what I'm saying? So it's albums I missed that he definitely put out that I hadn't really, I didn't, oh, I didn't know this song came off that album. So I started listening to his shit, and I was just like, oh, I'm actually more of a fan than I thought. Mm-hmm. Like, I really like, and then so when I met him, though, I became a fan of him. Um, Like, just, like, artistically, like, this is what I tell people all the time, man. I, um, You met Clayco. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So me and Clayco had this conversation all the time, man. Um, Like, there are certain people that you'll come across that their ideas may seem crazy because they're thinking in the future. And it's mm-hmm. sometimes it's hard to live in the future, right? Um, And so, like, a lot of things that he said, I've heard him, and those are the type of things that I'm actually on personally. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, just just different concepts, things that he would like to see on the planet. Like, you know what I'm saying? He, I, I can guarantee you that he wants to see world peace. Like, he's not one of those type of people that wants to see war. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Nobody wants to see that for real. All right, so, like, even, like, you'll hear him talk. He was like, man, I think we should take all the, you know, negative words out of, like, just how you speak in general. Like, but then, like, certain holy texts, it's like the Bible supports rape and shit. It's like, you can rape a bitch if. <laughs> hey, hey. The Bible is a wild book, The Bible man. is wild as fuck, bro. I don't give a fuck nobody say that. Yeah, like, if you really read the Bible, man, you'd be like, this happened in the this wild. This is a gangster flick. This, yeah, this ain't nothing but menace to society. Nigga, yeah. David, one of God's favorite, loved his best friend's wife. He oh, saw yeah. his bro, her breasts. Breast like a gazelle. Mm. He was basically watching from the window jacking off. Oh, God. Yeah. And his homeboy was such about that life. Think about this shit. His partner was about that life. He was in the army. Third life. I ain't going to say he was in the army the Lord because then I'd be poking for him. But he was in the army. And he was like, man, I, he fucked around and started fucking with old boy wife. And he got her pregnant. And then was like, hey, man, send Joseph a... Whatever his name was. Yeah. Send a nigga to the front line. Knowing he's going to get killed. Yeah, man. Send a nigga over there where them, uh, them South Shire Chicago niggas is shooting at each other. Just send him over there. He gonna, he's going to be that. And don't it. give him no gun. Out there. Out there. Dead. Yeah. yeah. Tell everybody he said, fuck the ops. <laughs> send this to his wife. Let yeah, yeah. Send his wife. Yeah, let, wife know, let him know. 
Then he got down. I mean, shit, he had what he had. You know what I mean? But the Bible is a tr- you know. crazy book, man. Yeah, it's crazy as fuck. It's so it's juicy, crazy, bro. It is. It's a sassy book. It's a sassy ass book, bro. The Bible is a sassy <laughs> book. You know, because everybody the- look at Jesus like if you look at the Bible, they make Jesus super pretty. Super, like, beautiful man. I was like, I'm pretty sure Jesus was none of that. He was a regular, everyday dude that was just trying to do right. And man. then they made mad. They, they they killed him because he was like, yeah, what y'all doing is stupid and wrong. And everybody's like, nah, uh <laughs> nah, uh How dare you want to give people that's homeless food, food and shelter? on a Sunday. What? Or a Saturday, depending on your religion. And he was with it in a gang. What do you think the disciples was? Gangs? But. A group. Everybody, to be honest with you, I don't even want to call them gangs. I feel like everybody operates in spheres of influence. Whenever you're around people that's like minded, y'all are together. No matter, not not in the like, just y'all oh, around game, each bro. other. It's a gang, a lot, bro. But that's the, but gang is such a negative connotation. That song I I I, I rap for you was like, oh, I heard that. Oh yeah, the song that I'm talking about that I rap that Westwood did a beat for back in the day was mm-hmm. called Thirteen Disciples. Cause I'm like. What nigga you know walking around with 12 disciples? He ain't no disciple. Hmm? Is it, that's a, them your people that y'all, y'all do shit with. Y'all get, it's just like a business. It's just an ancient business. Like Peter, the dude who killed people, uh, he used to be he a, was a, he was a Paul shooter. or Saul, I think. Paul was, named, Paul, changed his name. Saul was a, mur- a murdering motherfucker. Yeah, and he used to do, murder people for money or something. He was like he was a financial kill person. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right, that's the money man. That's the he was like, you a Christian? Yeah. He'd be like, nah, I'm not. I- Pow! <laughs> they had no guns. He had to. You had to power like this. Yeah. Hit him with a mallet or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had to work that elbow. Stone the shit out of you. <laughs> and then it's just like, if you just look at the Bible, it's just like, you got the bitch nigga, Doubting Thomas. Mm. He just like, I don't know about this, y'all. Thomas was just a nigga, though. Yeah, he was just, he was, he was there. Like, that's a regular hood nigga. Yeah. Like, if you go to a regular hood nigga and be like, bro, I can jump on top of this building. And then all your partners believe you. But, but little JJ gonna be like, Bro, you can jump on top of the building, my nigga. He what you been mean? smoking that shit again. What you mean you can jump on top of the building? No. You saying once you get up there, you can jump up? You're like, nah, I can jump over that motherfucker. How about that? You're like, nah. I don't believe you. I don't believe that bullshit. But they got the Cap, look, look, look. Put, nigga hit you with that. Cap. Yeah. In, in 1855 B.C. It cra- like, the Bible is such a crazy book, man. You be sitting there like, once you read it enough, and you be like, oh, it's just... You know, it's the stories. It's just number yeah. of stories with parables in it. And you're supposed to use the parables, you know, everyday life. The allegories and all that. All yeah, that, and bro. people take it to like, it's so crazy to see how deep people take it. Like, bro, he's just telling you don't overeat. Don't covet nobody's wife. Treat people like you want to be treated. And live them the best way you can. And, and, and be fair to people when you're doing business. That's all. That's it. And it's so easy. It's telling you not to be a dick. Don't be a dick. That's it. The That's all, all the religions. religions. Yeah. I like, bro. And take care of yourself. This your body. It's your temple. This and then they you. tell you other ways, like inadvertently, to not be a dick. Mm-hmm. So it's like, hey, man, you know, if you eat right, you'll feel better. Then you won't be a dick. Yep. If you stop drinking, you'll feel all right this week. Look, look, fuck that. Look. Look, it's Memorial Day weekend. Mm. <laughs> it is. Man, shout out to Memorial. Man, whoever, whoever How many was. Memorial Days do we have? I feel like we got like six. Cause it feel like it'd be that in President's Day a lot, or Veterans Day really. Memorial like, Day and Veterans Day the are same like day. they the same day, except the Veterans Day, it kind of can be both veteran and memorial. Like you know what yeah. I'm saying? It, yeah. So it's like, are you alive still? Well, come on down and get you a free meal at the goddamn IHOPs. Well, these soldiers aren't alive. Oh God! That's so that you could be alive, freedom costs a buck oh five. They got like mm, a, right, right, right. But Veterans Day is was your uncle in Vietnam? Get that nigga out of that goddamn back room doing that hair and bring him up to <laughs> is, bring, bring him up to Ryan's and get him a free meal. Yeah, from the barbecue shack. From the barbecue shack. Veterans Day. Get your uncle out there from doing that cocaine. Yeah, yeah. Get your uncle out of that back room smacking his arm. Yeah, out here touching. Your him. uncle smoked crack. Yeah. Odds oh, is he's either a fuck up or he was a Vietnam vet. Yeah, or he just like buying forty dollar pussy off Fulton Industrial. And then on the young soldiers and shit, you never know they just young soldiers. You just think they just a fucked up ass nigga. It's like, but that nigga get him. It's like, man, you know nigga went to Iraq. Yo, my homeboy do comedy named Forrest. He's been to two did two terms of war. Two. 
And that's why he's a comedian. Bro, he artist now. He got all the face tattoos. He used to be a, uh, a psychiatrist and all that shit. He's perfectly sane human being. But, like, you go to war twice, that'll change you. He was a psychiatrist before war? Like, clinical. Went to school, all that shit. That is crazy. And then, like, well, while he was in the Army, that was one of his things he had to do. And I was like, that's wild, bro. And mm. and people don't be giving them people to the respect. Like, I, if somebody was like, hey, y'all need to all go to war, I guarantee you 95% of everybody be like, nah, I'm good. Even the ones you think is about that life, not about that life. They're not really about that life. That's some fuck shit. I think, man, once you, like, develop a sense of, uh, it's crazy, man. I was watching on, uh, was it Joe Rogan? It sounded like a Joe Who Rogan. Who was it? Was it Joe Rogan? So I'm, I, all right, so I'm just going to tell you, I'm in a point in my life where I don't listen to music much in the car. I listen to people talking shit, right? Okay. So I'll be on YouTube like, what, what YouTube? I'll be like, Ooh, how far YouTube. is it to the crib? Yeah. 27 minutes. Podcast, I need to find man. a 20, 30 minute. Les Brown. Type shit. You know what I mean? Who was, you know, <laughs> Hermes Trismegistus. <laughs> Who? Yeah, exactly. So um, I watched this dude. He was a sniper. Actually, was it Vlad? Could have been Vlad. Sound I'm like sorry, Glad. Vlad. Yeah. Anyway. Glad TV. Glad TV. It sounds like a gay network. <laughs> the gay lad. The gay lad network. Yeah. Anyway, it was it was it was. I think it might have been. Anyway, it was a uh, it was a sniper, um, mm-hmm. black dude, right? And he was just talking about um, he was just talking about everything he had to go through. I don't forgot the reason why he was talking about this right now. But he he was just talking about like all the like mental stuff that it had uh, like that it took to like do that job, you know what I'm saying? To yeah. like to go out there and be a real cold killer, and even like his like colleagues like eventually like they became suicidal and shit like that. You know what I mean? Like that shit to change uh, take a whole part of humanity out of you. It will, man. It causes trauma, man. Like people don't understand, trauma is a is a weird, is a real thing. I said I was gonna do a TED talk one day. It's gonna be called. Trauma awareness. Oh, man. America, the funny thing about America is the shit that they be saying is trauma, for the most part, isn't really that, that isn't really trauma. It's just you have never gone through anything. Your mental doesn't have a shelf to put that trauma. So it's new to you and you feel like it's trauma. It's just that you might have lived a super privileged life. That's what I've learned, too. People that live this super privileged life, when things go wrong, they just fall apart, and you'd be like, "It's it's not that bad. It's you're, nothing is happening to where you need to go kill yourself or delete yourself." Thanks, but watch this though, Ferb. What you're speaking from is, man, what's the what's the right word to call this? Trauma culture, because that's what we lit. Like the yeah, whole we, world like, is yeah. trauma culture. Mm-hmm. We. Especially as black folks, like that ain't that bad. It's like nigga, that was bad. Yeah, my like, mama was doing drugs. Yeah, like what do you mean, bro? I just watched my mama get uh, go to Piggly Wiggly, watch him throw out the old vegetables in the dumpster, and she dumpster dive for old vegetables. Ain't nothing wrong with this, boy. Shut up. And you wash it off, and uh, you had a meal that night. Yeah, we ate. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But I'm sure that's regular to you. I'm just saying. I'm sure at one point when my mama was a bad bitch. Yep. You know, because all every female at one point in their life, they're a bad bitch, whether they bad or not. Mm-hmm. And I know, I know back in the true. day it was called something different, but it's just the level of confidence of a woman that, no, I, I can do this. Boom, 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 boom. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I know there's a disconnect between my mama being a bad bitch and going in a dumpster to get greens. Yeah. Shut yeah. up. Buy nothing wrong with these greens. Something happened between there. That was not that. That's not like a two day transition. That's like some years. Some years. Some years. I think. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's it's crazy how a world is and how your trauma can turn into. If you, I personally feel like if you're doing like black people, we have the most traumatic in America. Most black people, a high percentage of us, have some sort of traumatic experience in our life and way we're living. That's how. But I feel like we also, if you if you hone it in correctly, you can form that into whatever art or that energy into whatever you want. Like it could be your business, it could be your five hundred one c three. If you got like a, a 
the organization that you do. Thanks. No, I definitely. Rapping, I definitely singing, that. dancing, drawing, art. Like, I just feel like, and my trauma just turned into my defense mechanism turned into be comedy. Down on purpose, I don't want to see nobody die. I done been the dude that be diffusing in, uh, people fighting for the longest. Don't I don't want to be this person. That's just who you it's are. It's just how it is. Yeah. And then I just be like, oh, I'm okay. I get it. I can. My words mean something to these people, but I try to say it this way so they could get it because Facts. they can't get it no other way. No, that's real. Just shit, like man. in rapping or just writing a song or something. You really saying coming from a real place could be traumatic most times. And, and it just come out beautiful. Bro, one line I can tell you. My trust is like a blood diamond. I lost so much of me so you can get it. Like, my trust is like a blood diamond. That's real. I lost so much of me so you can get it. Ain't ain't no telling who gonna come. Ain't no telling who gonna end up with it. It look good on you, I'll admit it. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. that's like a love trauma. Like, you know. Oh, that's true. They don't talk about that, man. I think men Bro, don't talk about. They don't talk about it for men. It's always women. It don't. <laughs> women be swearing. We be up and down, just hurting them every every day. And then they're like, "Damn, well, what about us? We have feelings and hearts too." So this is what they say. They say a woman when she get broke up with, and she was in love, right? And she get done dirty. She call her friend and she cry for weeks. They said when a man get done dirty and he was in love, he didn't get hit by a bus because <laughs> he like he just. He said he get hit by a bus. Yeah, he just walking like a zombie. <laughs> and he, he don't even know what the fuck going on around him. Yo, he just was like, because you think we just, so much. They think we monsters, bro. Bro, it, it do. It, it do. I ain't going to front. I done had a monster years where I would just be like, nah, I don't believe nothing. You say, lady, and I'm about to just, you know, do what I do. No, but but that's the trauma. Yeah, and I know. I don't want to live like that. I don't want to trust a woman. I don't want to kiss in the mouth and all that shit. Like, I want to kiss in the mouth and all that. Yeah, and believe in me. Bump, 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 yeah, bump. you don't want the guy. Bump, bump, bump. Prep pill, vagina. You don't prep, want that. Prep pill, have you, do you have bumps on your mouth? <laughs> when it, when it, hey, before the, the, well, the websites, though, they had the blue screen with the call. When it, hundred... <laughs> Pep pill. <laughs> Bumps are us. Bumps are us. 1 800 Bumps are us. That's 770 241 didn't know. Do you have herpes yeah, or does anyone almost, that you love? That was almost my phone number. I was like, uh, what am I saying right now? Yo. <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? But yeah, yeah, we need to normalize men, uh, ladies, listening to men when they're going through stuff because y'all do not care. I feel like the world oh, cares man. way more about women than they do men, well, which I is an actual here, but fact. I'm roll up, though. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, I can roll uh, up. Yeah, you can roll up in here. I care way more about me, but you know that's neither here nor there. So you, right. you started working on, uh, you know, you got the text and you send y'all back and forth. How does that process work, man? So um, it's kind of like, so when I was getting groomed, just like, uh, like by like elders, like just in general, like with business and all of that, man. Um, you know, people would come through, talk to us at the school, and they would tell me that networking is. Not, hey, can I have your card? That's not networking. That's getting that's getting people's information. Networking was meeting people and being yourself and these people getting to like you, right? Yeah, that's um, true. Because I don't believe in being fake. You know what I'm you saying? It's weird, man. People be fake as hell. You be like, bro, that's not you. I can tell. This ain't Do you. Do you not smoke herbs but smoke herbs? Mike's Herb Blend. Anyway. Coming to a theater near Coming you. Coming to a Backwood. No, I hope you don't put this in the backwood. That's yeah, let them know weird. what that is. It's not real what you think. It's herbs. Nah, man. This is uh, mullen in here. I got mullen. Um, I got red clover. I got jinko leaf. Um, some rosebud. A little bit of rosebud. Actually, I don't even got no rosebud in here. But yeah, man, we been smoking herbs. We smoke the herb around here, you know? And that, that don't mean just one herb. You know, you guys are one-minded people. Yes. You smoke one herb. Oh, Blam, blam. You smoke one herb. Chop. Me, I smoke a five, six herb together. 17. You know what the herb do? Sometimes it help your mind. Sometimes it help your third eye. Third. Sometimes it help your heart, you know? Your chakra. Lord of mercy. <laughs> <laughs> we, so, we got ADHD so bad. Facts. <laughs> it's like, we just wait. be enabling each other look, 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 look. <laughs> So what was we talking about 17 minutes ago? What? So you yeah. said, you had was in elementary this. school, you're telling your life story. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it is, man. It's, uh, bro. But That's nah, man. Funny. So that process was like, um, 
Um, you know, you it's kind of like every job that you own, man, and you, and you got to take it like a job if you're like doing anything artistic. Um, you you're working, and you want the person that you're working with, uh, who may be the plug or who may be the connect, to know that your work is quality. Mm -hmm. So at the time, man, I'm coming home, um, and uh might be 12 o'clock in the morning, man. I'm just like, light the studio up and start laying shit down. And, and at the time, my ex is like, what are you doing? It's, it's one o'clock in the morning. And I'm just like, I'm, I, I shut that down real quick. I'm like, yeah, I'm doing this. I'm doing this for something that you ain't never seen before. So shut the fuck up. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. Ladies, y'all need to listen. If nigga doing something and he doing it in the oddest you time, you ain't never seen your let nigga him do it. Go this hard before let him fry. Don't ask him what he doing. Ask him what he need. Yes, cause he about to get you out your situation. And he and he want to get you out your situation. You just gotta be relax and let him cook. Let your man cook. Bring him the ingredients and let him be the best chef ever. Let him do what he do, baby. Yeah. He try. Listen, it's in it's in his DNA to do for you. You want him to do for you. Y'all get on all these podcasts and IG uh, posts and be like, I want a man that does this. It's like, but I don't want to go through the mud with him. It's like, oh, well, well, then you don't really want that dude. You don't really want that dude because, shit, if you find a nigga that already done got it automated, you he just not a side piece. With you. Yeah. yeah. Even if he marry you, you just an in-house side piece. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because he's spending more time with another bitch. But anyway, yeah, so... I'm like just making sure that what I provide is quality, right? You know, um, like so you was in there like laying tracks, vocals, sending it back. Well, so like it'll sometimes it'll be different, man. You know what I'm saying? You'll get an email or you'll get a because you iPhone assholes like to text each other music, weird ass motherfuckers. Yeah, I got an Android, and I hope they burn in hell. Um, <laughs> you know you got to defend yourself these days. We got like, Android, yeah, yeah. Niggas, yeah. Cause Cause you got that iPhone. People mean, are racist. Got Android. Y'all are like the new racist people. I got two phones. I got an Android too. What are you well, talking I'm about? Not you, brother. You're, you're, the, you're, you're <laughs> bridging both. the gap. You're bridging yeah, the gap. Yeah, I was like, I already know the, the benefits of both. I, I, hey, listen. Shout out to Cook Cabin, where you can make a difference in music. No, uh, I was at Cook Cabin, man. Shout out to W. Shout out to Cash. Um. And we ain't had no signal up there. We was in the cabinet. It's a cook up. Like, we gonna cook up. And everybody's exchanging files. And I'm like, can you email it to me? And they're like, I ain't got no signal. Can, can you put your the hot spot on? It's like, yeah, but in order to have a hot spot, I gotta have a signal. And I'm like, everybody's just, blah, 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 uh, airdropping air shit to each other. And I'm just like, that was my first time, bro, in my whole life. And I was like, I need an iPhone. Even if you don't, even if you don't got no service. I just need one. I need an iPhone. Yeah, man. Because I'm pretty sure I could have got more music that weekend. Excuse me, guys. I am struggling. So anyway, I say all that to say that, uh, like, I knew what was I knew what was available, right? As far as I knew what was possible, as far as who I could work with and all of that. Um, uh, now, mind you, before this situation came about. Um, I'm in the studio and I'm meeting all types of A&Rs um, from different labels. Well, all from Atlanta, by the way. Atlanta influences everything. Shout out to Ernie and the Cut over there off of Backstreet on uh, 412 Chamberlain on back uh, backside of um, Edgewood. It's a mirror right there on the side of the building that says Atlanta influences everything. Um, so, yeah, like I, I knew where it could go. Um, of course, it was kind of like one of those things is like, hey, I need you to make some cakes. And it's like, all right, his cakes are good. They are good. I tasted them before. I told y'all the niggas were good at making cakes. And you just keep making better cakes. And they're like, you know what? We want you to make a cake for the king. And it's like, I knew that shit was coming. I knew yeah. It. I knew it. So <laughs> when um, it started kind of trickling in, it'd be like, hey, man, um, got this verse for bro. You know what I'm saying? Put something to it. And the way that even he does it, man, like he'll have somebody, he'll have, Four or five people touch a verse, like yeah, he'll write a verse, so people don't, so people can even understand like how it works. He'll write a verse and then he'll send it to you and be like, "What you think? Can you tweak this shit a little bit?" And then you'll send some shit back tweaking it, Killing. first style. Yeah, 
the he'll send this shit over there. And then he'll tweet that shit. And then he'll send it over here and be like, all right, is this good? Mm. You know what I'm saying? You didn't made you done made uh chicken corn on blue or uh lamb chops real quick. And I tell you like individually on some other side shit, what's so crazy about him is sometimes nobody has the words. You go back and listen to some of his projects, it's mumbles. Yeah. It's like, oh, he never, okay. He just put a mumble or a sound. Yeah, because yeah, it was like, there's no feeling. That nigga live in the future, bro. <laughs> that nigga live in the future, bro. That's real shit. But yeah, so that's how that shit worked. Like, so eventually, um, this particular person, because I was um, on top of my shit as far as what I was doing for him, um, and I guess um, just finding the, the culture way to say all this, um, the way the business agreement worked anyway was like, hey, man, if you can pick up my slack. <laughs> and so I was. I did I did great. I did great at picking up the slack. Um, was working on Yandy, man. And, um, this is when he took that hard left. This is when he went really went Christian. He went to Jesus is King. He went to Jesus is King. Great. It, it switched. It's, yeah. And, um... But even that was an adventure, man. Being being out, out there in Calabasas at his compound, and um, that's crazy, bro. <laughs> like in my mind, I'm like, you was at Ye's house in Calabasas, bro. I gotta crazy. tell you a funny story. I gotta tell you this shit. I gotta tell you this story. <clears throat> so this is the last Sunday service that's in Calabasas. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's when he, everybody had on the suits, the little suits, what, jogging outfits. I guess they did. It was like, they was all like potato skin brown. Yeah. <laughs> Nude. Yeah. So anyway, we, uh, met, I met, <laughs> I met, I met the last Sunday service. And, um, now, but mind you, while this Yandy action is going on, the, the people that I'm working with that work with him was telling me like, man, yeah, he's like on his chakras and. You know, he wants people to be aware of their energy. You know, it's just a, it's just, it's just, it's just a spiritual awakening up, right? You know, it's a person that's realizing like, hey, you know, I experienced this, so I was on this. I need everybody around me to be on this. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, for most that don't know, I'm a Kundalini Reiki master. Outside of being, you know, doing music, I'm an actual certified healer. And so I'm like, oh, snap, bro is on the same thing I'm on. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. oh, he's speaking my Spanish now. Yeah. So I, I go out there, and I don't know what's happened since then. And uh, since then, apparently, and I've heard this, I'm not sure, but it was like uh, some of the neighbors thought he was starting to cope because they had people dressing the same or whatever, like something weird like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, he's got him wearing those jumpsuits. Next thing, it's Kool-Aid. Like, <laughs> whole time, whole time, and then he just want to play some music. For his friends. He just want his friends to come through and enjoy music the whole time. That's crazy. And guess what? He feed them afterwards. That sounds just like a regular ass day. Just it just got more cameras in this Kanye West. They call it Sunday service, but nobody preached or nothing. Like people be like, So what happened? What did he teach there? And it's like, no, bro, he's playing music. And he's it, flipping music. He's taking his own music and taking his love for his religion. And the mm-hmm. deity of that religion and like giving his all. Got you. That's it. So, anyway, so I'll tell you this funny story. So, Sunday service is going, and I'm just like, I'm just like, <laughs> you know, like, oh my gosh, look at the sky. It's so green. It's so blue. It's so perfect. So terrific. And uh, I look behind me, right? I'm kind of like stadium seating, like bleachers almost outside. And I see this like white dude in this long white robe, and he got like all this like, Jewelry garb on. He looked like me. Like if I decided to be like, you know what, I'm holy. Matter of fact, Westwood, he got a. Yeah, I, I, I said, bro, I don't walk there. I don't, bro, what you? What I you got on? Know. Like, you know what? Close Dude, guys. I don't even want to know. know what you got on. What? What? You got on a. Jashajib. Jashib. You got a on a disciple outfit. A shashuka. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it's called. With sandals. He got on the, the disciple long, the long motherfucker. You know, we're in Atlanta, so you can say the long white motherfucker. Yeah, we know, everybody knows what you're talking about. Everybody knows exactly. He look like he Muslim. Exactly. Or Israeli, um, um, Judy. So Judy he got is. on the garb. Yeah, so the white dude got on the garb. He got on the shit. I'm like, oh, 
my people, right? So, <laughs> shit's over with. We go eat. Now, I'm sitting down. I'm talking to one of the neighbors. Uh, <laughs> the neighbors have engaged in conversation with me. And I grew up in church, bro. Like, I know all, I know the Bible yeah. very well, right? So they're having conversation with me, and they're just delighted with me. And we finally sit down, and I'll never forget. I'm sitting at a table with the little, you know, like the little picnic table with the bench. Mm-hmm. You know, it's long, right? Yay is right here. He's facing the other way. Now, if you if you ever been around, yeah, you know he's listening to everything. He's paying attention to everything only because, like, in my opinion, because he gets inspiration from everything, and he also wants to just be on top of shit. <laughs> so we talking, we woo, wham, wham, we talking. They right here. I look over to the left, and the white dude with the garb on is laying hands on people, and I'm like, I knew this is where I was supposed to be at. He just people falling out and shit. No, nah, they ain't falling okay. out. This ain't no creep. This ain't that. Uh, I thought he was hitting them with the uh, the zoom zam. Yeah. Nah, so then ain't that type of laying hands. He's actually uh, like he doing reiki. Uh, right? So I'm like, bet. Finish my little waffles. Trying to dodge a little the white Calabasas neighbors because even though they love me and love Christ, I'm looking at my buddy over here and he's doing what I love. So I go over there. Some I observe right now. Folks who know me know I call myself Gangster Guru. So, like, I say that to say, like, if you could, like, positively gangbang. That makes sense. Like, spiritually gangbang. That's crazy. First of all, positively, spiritually gangbang. Yeah. It's, it's such a mind fuck. Because, like, you know, like, I tell people to be vigilant against trauma. You got to treat trauma like an intruder in your career, bro. You got to fight your trauma. You do. So... I say all that to say this. So I went over there and I'm like, hey, you do Reiki? He's like, yeah. I was like, when did you get attuned? Oh, I taught myself. You can't teach yourself Reiki. It's impossible. You have to get attuned. I don't even know what that is. Right. Like yeah. you under someone's tutelage and they teach you? Nah, man. The person energetically passes off the ability to, for you to be able to do that. And oh, uh, it just, you know, I can go into details on how that actually I works. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, like they open up your channels for Reiki. Like, you know, at the time, Yusui Reiki was what I was doing. This is before Kundalini Reiki. Actually, this is after Kundalini Reiki. And um, I, t- I tell him, I say, hey, man, I'm actually a Kundalini Reiki master. You know what I'm saying? Would you like me to do some Reiki on you? Because the choir, they like getting stuff done. So they're like, oh, my gosh, this guy. And as I walk in, they're like, oh, this guy, black guy's the real deal. I can see him in them, right? They're saying this. I got my. I got my necklace on. on all, you got on your I got your my whoop de whoop on. Yeah, I know you do. So I go to put my hands on him. Like, I go over. I say, hey, man, I'm good. Can, I, can I touch your crown, brother? Yeah, man, you can touch this white dude. I can touch my crown. So. <laughs> this shit got to be wild because you over here gigging like a fire. Bro. Man, I go to go on top. I go to put my hand on top of his crown. I'm calling um, Diamond Reiki. So Diamond Reiki is designed to put an etheric diamond in your crown chakra so that the energies coming into you take on the properties of diamond clarity and, mm. you know, toughness, right? That's just the science behind it. Man, I go to doing a Reiki and dude go to, hoo-ah! Hoo-ah! <laughs> hoo-ah! now, mind y'all, no. I, didn't tell the, I didn't tell you, everybody that's at this Sunday service is somebody you've seen on TV for the most part. <sighs> There's a lot going on in this in my thought right I now. I can tell you, Chris Rock, he there. Kelly, uh, Ke- uh, what's the, the... Roland? Nah, not her. This white woman. Uh, from the Daily Show? Oh, shit. Maybe her name not Kelly. Could be. El- the alien chick. Anyway. Nope. Have no... Katy Perry. Oh, okay. Katy Perry. Firework, that girl. Okay. She's there. Like, all these, like, celebrities... Are there because those are his friends. He's inviting his friends over for music and food. That's crazy. And this dude is, oh my God. Ah. And I got my hands over and I look over and I see the dude that I'm working with and he can, he looking at me like, nigga, don't you fuck this up. And his assistant is also looking like, bro, you look like you need a rescue. Oh man. 
His assistant actually is my dog now, man. He's a very successful guy does fashion, man. Um, now I want to. I don't want to say his name because I don't want to mm-hmm. say that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But um, uh, the dude. Uh, anyway, uh, so the dude's assistant comes and gets me, and he's like, "Hey, twice, bro. We got a we got a dip." And I'm like, "Oh, snap, for sure. I already know what he own." He's like, yeah. But the whole time doing this, security is walking by looking me in the face like, nigga, what you want? It's white dude. Oh. But he got the ability to say nigga with his look. Oh. He like, nigga, what you own? I'm trying to help you out, my boy. Get out of here. And I'm like, I'm looking at him like, nigga, I don't got nothing to do with this weird ass shit. I'm doing, I know the shit I look, that I'm doing looks weird. But it's him. It's him. <laughs> oh my God. You ever got kicked out? N- yes. That's hilarious. I almost got kicked out. And then I just went down to the actual, like, the little house, actually, that I found out later on was the studio because I hadn't been inside of there yet. Um, But, yeah, that was, like, that was one of the funniest things that happened to me out there, bro, like, me trying to, like, be a light worker and shit. Then this white dude just over here foaming at the mouth about to. That's scary. I ain't gonna front. If I'm there, like, oh, shit. He was crying, dog. He was crying. Yeah, I did the whole like speak to him and spoke to him. He was crying. <laughs> that nigga got some demons. I was like, man. You got something going on, bro. Yeah, he was tree. He almost blew the whole operation, bro. I know it took a long time to tell this story, but. Nigga, we didn't. <laughs> I think we didn't hit the end, too. We had an hour. But you got to let people know like what you got coming up, too. Um, So what I got coming up, what I just did is I just dropped uh, the Mike Twice Experience. Uh, part three, my EP series is the Mike Twice Experience. So you can look up the Mike Twice Experience, Mike Twice Experience two, and the Mike Twice Experience three. I just dropped three. Um, I just did a uh, Tiny Desk type style uh, performance that I think I'm gonna chop up and put out, man. Um, let some people see uh, that magic that happened that day. Um, I'm also working on a, working on an actual uh, stage performance play sort of situation that I'm probably holler at you about too. Okay. You'll probably be interested in that too. Um, but other than that, man, y'all can find me on IG at, at the real twice. Uh, MikeTwice.com is my website. That's my real website. Uh, on Twitter, Mike underscore twice. Um, man, y'all go listen to the EP. I put in a lot of hours behind this shit, man. I call it Gourmet Music Bites, you know. Um, four songs, um, skits, um, you know, just something that I really put my time and effort into. Um, but yeah, y'all fuck with it, man. Uh, and I really, I, I love y'all. I love y'all, man. I, re- I love, I love what you do for me, brother. I'm-